Statistics and Excel. Histogram examples. Got data? Let's get stuck into it with statistics and Excel. You're not required to, but if you have access to OneNote, icon, left-hand side, OneNote presentation, 1070 histogram examples tab. Also, we're uploading transcripts to OneNote, so you can use the immersive reader tool. Change the language. First, a word from our sponsor. Well, actually, these are just items that we picked from the YouTube shopping affiliate program, but that's actually good for you because these aren't things that were just given to us from some large corporation which we don't even use in exchange for us selling them to you. These are things that we actually researched, purchased, and used ourselves. Bayer Dynamic, not sure if I said that right, but this is the DT770 Pro 250 OHM Studio Reference Closed Back Headphones. I wear headphones basically every day for a large part of the day. They are important to me. Therefore, I've gone through many different kinds of headphones. I've had these for some time and they've worked quite well. They fit over my ears, but I'm still able to put my glasses on under the headphones. The headphones not pinching too tight on the glasses to give me a headache, which is nice. The quality of the padding is good and it has lasted for some time. I've had these for some time now and they haven't gotten all torn up on me or anything like that. I also like that I have a cord when I'm doing my recordings as opposed to a USB centered headphone because that frees up a USB port and I find the USB headphones to be less reliable. They come with an audio jack that looks like this, which is useful for me because that plugs into my audio interface. However, if you want to use the headphones for some other purpose, I believe it's fairly easy to get a converter to other types of audio jacks. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com where we have many different courses. You can purchase one at a time or have a subscription model giving you access to all the courses. Courses which are well organized have other resources like Excel files and PDF files to download and no commercials if you so choose and either read or listen to the transcript in multiple different languages using the timestamps to tie in to the actual video presentations. OneNote desktop version here, continuing on with our theme, taking data, making pictorial representations of the data so we can get a different viewpoint, another angle at that data, hopefully being able to extract more meaning from it than we otherwise would be able to do. So we're gonna be looking at more histograms now for a couple different reasons. One, we just wanna think about how widespread this concept would be. We can get data from many, many areas and applying a pictorial representation such as a histogram can be an applicable step in a lot of those different areas. And two, we wanna get a feel of just the different, the different looks that a histogram can look like with different data sets. So let's just go through some histograms here. So this is going to be uh, the steps. So we're gonna imagine here that the data being pulled was the number of steps that were taken. So we've got zero, zero, and then the data set uh, going up here. We've sorted it from lowest to highest. We have a very long data set for the number of steps that have been tracked. So if we make a histogram from this, now we've got the uh, steps put into buckets. So we've made the bucket zero to 25,000, 25,000 to 5,000, 5,000 to 7,500, 7,500 to 1,000. And we get this pictorial representation uh, of the steps because we see how many of the count fall into those particular, those buckets. Now these are, are gonna be basically skewed to the right because we have the tail end to the right. So we have very few days where we had steps of 27,500 uh, to 3,000. So those were big exercise days. And after that day happened, possibly the next day, we didn't have that many steps. <laughs> well, a very low uh, level uh, of steps. So any kind of data like this type of health data uh, is something that we could populate in a histogram and possibly get a better sense of, of, that, of what's going on with that data set. Let's take a look at another one. 
Uh, this is going to be the distance. So how far we went. So again, we sorted it from lowest to highest. So you've got a lot of zeros here. And then it's going up uh, for the distance. And we've got a huge amount of, or a pretty decent amount of data up to 27 uh, up top. Okay, so we've got the distance. And if we graph that data set, and by the way, most of these data sets, if you want to practice with different data sets yourself, we're pulling from Kaggle. So you can say it's K-A-G-G-L-E, K-A-G-G-L-E uh, dot com. So here we have the distance in the buckets, 0 to 1.9, 1.9 to 3.8, 3.8 to 5.7, and the number of items that count that falls into those buckets. Once again, we have it uh, skewed to the right. So we have very few days that are way out here uh, where we have this uh, large distance. So let's take a look at another one. We have then the calories. All right, so now we've got the calorie data. And so that's kind of interesting. We've got something that's more centered looking. And so we've got, again, the dates on the left. We've sorted it by the number of calories. So you can see the calorie count uh, going up as, as we go down the data set here. And if we take all that and we graph it, now we've got something that looks more like, you know, more closer to a normal distribution, right? Now we've got something kind of in the middle, and this is what you might uh, uh, expect with with uh, with uh, calories, right? Because you might expect that that your take that your that your normal intake, just in terms of your body's, if you're gauging just on what what your body's telling you to do, you're usually around. A certain range you would think right because that otherwise you would be uh, gaining weight or losing weight over a longer period of time you would think so you've got then zero to, to 370 370 to 740 740 to 100 110 and so on and then we have our midpoint here and it's tapering off to the left and uh to the right which is which is something that you would kind of expect on a calorie uh, distribution. Let's see what else we got here. Uh, and notice like this kind of, like if I, if I try to approximate a line with some of these, it would be difficult, to, maybe to, to more difficult to try to, 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 to plot like a line to give us some predictive power with these, right? If I have something again with, with that looks more like a bell curve kind of thing, we'll talk about a bell curve distribution later. But notice that all the data that we have will not always fall into something that we can easily plot a line through it. We would like to have a function with it if we could, because then that gives us some predictive power, you know, with a mathematical function, which would be nice. So then we've got, uh, then what, what do we have here? This is going to be, this is the, to be honest, I don't know exactly what the value is that's being represented, but... And this is an example that has negative values here. So note that we have a histogram that has, you know, negative values and then going into the positive and we could still see, you know, our center part over here and then it, it uh, tailing off into the negative. Let's do another one here. So this is the GDP per capita uh, current dollars. So we've got the GDP number. So now we're looking at uh, economic data. And when you do that, you got to think per capita, per person kind of thing, the GDP divided by the number of people. And so now we've got something that is uh, skewed to the right again, because we got the tail uh, over to the right. So we took all of this data and you can see we sorted it by, by the GDP per capita and from uh, 221 to to the 17221 uh, we have the largest amount here and then and then as we get the GDP per capita going up we have many fewer that are falling into those buckets so most are falling into the bucket on, on the lower buckets and then as we have the GDP per capita going up, we have fewer falling into those buckets with an outlier way out here with the GTP per capita at 221, 221, which is interesting. You would think that'd be a very uh, well, you know, well off uh, place. <laughs> so we can actually check it out down here. So if I scroll down, it's saying uh, Monaco in this data set. All right, let's go back up top and see what the next one looks like. So now we've got uh, activity per hour calories. 
So uh, calories, and we have a lot of the 42 and the calories going up on a per hour. So if we look at this kind of medical data, then we can compile tons of data, right? The stepping data, the calories per hour, the calories per day, uh, and, and whatnot. And then obviously we, can, we may want to start to compile the data. So this one uh, has a bunch of basically the outliers over here. So when we just simply plot this, uh, this information, we've got it then skewed to the right. Now notice that these outliers are forcing us possibly to have these buckets, you know, maybe out here. So maybe it would be more useful for us to trim off some of these buckets, and then we can then we can kind of zoom in on more of the of the data that's in in a relevant range. So and so those are some techniques we could do with the with the graph or uh, with Excel. And so let's see the next one. And so I have the name. Uh, and the total. Oh, I think <laughs> I think these are like Pokemon characters. Uh, uh, that w it was that was a this was another kind of. I thought it was a funny data set uh, from that was on the Coggle website or Kaggle. I'm not how you say. I'm not sure how you say the website, but I think it was Pokemon characters. And I'm assuming this is like their power strength level. You know. So if we look if we look at all of the characters, and I'm not I'm not that familiar with Pokemon, but I think. You know they fight each like they fight each other like a card game and then you have different power levels and who's going to win if the two were to fight each other or something like that and there's different categories of the power and whatnot so it gets kind of complicated but if you if you just plot uh their power levels you've got uh, the 180 to the to the 241 I, and i'm assuming this is low power so these are the weak ones 241 to 302 302 to 363 363 to 424, 424 to 485, and then pretty high power level. Most of them seem to be in this fairly high power level, which is kind of interesting. 485 to uh, 546, and then it drops out sharply, sharply for the more powerful ones, 546 to 607, and then you've got the super powerful one over here, which uh, apparently is if i scroll all the way down you've got the meto moto moto me eu two me too as a two i i don't know i don't know who that is but that's you don't want to, if you're a pokemon my takeaway from this data is you don't want to mess with that one hopefully uh but in any case, you can plot just about any set of data. That's the point. And, and you can get a pictorial representation and get a better idea of possibly what's going on. This might help you to determine how you play your play the Pokemon.